In this video, we'll use 3D audio analysis to estimate where the first single shots landed on the festival grounds. First we'll discuss ammunition and the visual presentation, then we'll show the animation. Finally, we'll cover some loose bits and pieces. All results are tentative, as there is no public info on the ammunition used, nor which weapon fired the first shots. We'll use several recordings, listed in the description, and we'll use visible cues to synchronize video. However, cell phone recordings have inherent audio sync issues, which can't be avoided. These issues were explained in a past episode. The round used in the analysis is the closest match found for the timing data. This does not mean that this round was used. It simply means that lacking additional info, it fits the data the best. The animation will show a top view, with all sound elements sized properly, and shown in 3D for each round. The orange cone is the supersonic shockwave. Its angle and curvature is defined by the velocity at a given moment. When this shockwave hits the ground, it's shown here as disappearing. In reality, depending on the surface, it may produce weak bounce echoes. The research literature gives the radius of the cone as 100 to 160 feet but it seems that in Las Vegas it may have reached 200 feet. The blue rectangle is the rifle report. These dots show when the respective sound occurs in each recording location. Note that cell phones are too inaccurate to show a precise, directional pattern of objects passing by at bullet speed. Here's the 3D animation synchronized to the first shot's video, played back in real time. Now four times slower. Now a recording by Josh Tonelli. Now four times slower. Now an alternative view from Mr. Burgundy's library. Now four times slower. Here are the likely target locations. These locations are more ambiguous along the bullet path, where the ellipses are longer. They're less ambiguous crosswise, where the ellipses are narrow. 
We can evaluate the results by comparing them to the known account of someone being hit by the initial shots. Everything started from me when I heard one single loud bang right behind me and I was in the VIP suites. And I turn around and look and I see that someone has fallen. And, but I know that I saw a woman fall with the correlation of that first shot. Person being shot up here on the balcony, we can see people crouching over, crouching down rather to attend to a woman. The witness mentions the first shot, but it seems that her location is a better match with the fifth shot. Perhaps this was the first shot that she noticed. Supposedly, Jake Morphonius has a video of another person hit by the initial shots, but only audio is played. During these initial shots, there was a man who was shot and killed only feet away from Witness 10. Let me just play a few seconds of the audio for you. Oh, that person's dead. If someone was indeed fatally wounded by one of the initial shots, and if that person was not subsequently moved, we could compare this analysis with the locations of the deceased shown in the LVMPD report. Unfortunately, it's hard to properly match the perspective of that report photo, but it looks like there may be a potential correspondence. If someone is in touch with Jake Morphonius, and he could share the video privately, it could be used to evaluate or correct this analysis. An analysis like this one is impossible for other groups of single shots, because we don't have enough recordings with a sonic crack for those shots. Also, unlike videos filmed near the stage during the music performance, recordings made during the other single shots don't offer common visual cues, which are needed for better synchronization. A common question is, why do shots sound louder further away from the hotel, like in the first shots clip? The answer is simple. Cell phones constantly adjust the recording level, depending on how loud the environment is. This is seen in the airport video, where the cell phone reacts to gunfire by lowering the recording level, and then adjusting it back up. In videos filmed near the stage, the loud music has a comparable volume to the gunfire. Cell phones adjust for the combined sound volume, and thus gunfire ends up quieter than it would be by itself. Further away from the stage, the gunfire has no competition from other loud sounds, so it stands out in the recording. Five by Five News pointed out that one of the recorded sonic cracks is doubled. Its two peaks are separated by a mere 12 thousandths of a second. It seems that this occurs when the bullet forms a secondary shockwave in its wake. The two shockwaves spread out at a slight angle to one another. In theory, it may be possible to detect this separation at the edge of the supersonic cone, at its furthest distance from the bullet path.